In this video, we are going to discuss about the equation of a straight line and we are also going to understand about 3D plane and hyperplane. Now this is a super important topic before we start any machine learning algorithm like uh, logistic regression or support vector machine. Let us consider over here an example. Suppose if I have one, two axes, one is x and y and if I probably try to create a straight line, we can represent or we can provide an equation for this particular straight line which is called as y is equal to mx plus c, right? And I hope you have seen this formula probably in your 10th standard, 8th, 9th standard. Similarly, I can also give some different kind of notation like y is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 into x or I can also give some other notations like this which is ax plus by plus c is equal to 0, okay? This both the equation are almost same. First of all, let's go and understand what this equation basically specifies. Over here, there are two things. One is the x and y coordinate. Obviously, you can definitely see this x, x and y axis. Here you have first component, which is called as m. m is nothing but it is called as slope. Now over here, what the slope denote is that in the unit movement in the x axis, what is the movement with respect to the y axis? So with respect to this, if I try to try to see what is the unit movement in y axis, this will basically be giving me the slope value. Okay. This is basically giving me the slope value, right? Now this is with respect to slope. What about C? C is basically called as intercept. Okay. Intercept. Now when I talk about C, let's consider that in this equation, if my X value is zero, so suppose if my X value is zero, where does this particular straight line meet the Y axis? So if I probably draw this, it meets, it meets somewhere here, right? So this point is basically my C or intercept, okay? Very simple, slope basically says that with the unit movement in the, in the X axis, how much movement is there with respect to the Y axis. The second thing is that when my X value is zero, then obviously you can see Y is equal to C, right? Because if this is becoming zero, so this basically indicates that at X is equal to zero, where does the straight line meet the Y axis, okay? Now you may be thinking, Trish, how this and this particular equation are one and the same. Let's consider over here guys. Let's say that this is my equation and now I can basically write something like this, right? So let's consider this. I will write by plus c is equal to minus x, then by is equal to minus ax minus c and finally y is equal to minus a by b. This is one component multiplied by x minus c by b. Now over here, you know that this also follows the same equation which is like y is equal to mx plus c right? Y is equal to MX plus C. Now, when I say this is basically my M value and this is basically my C value, right? The slope and the intercept. So almost both this equation also represents the same thing. Okay. <clears throat> now, just for the ease, easiness, what we can also do is that let's, let's provide one more equation of over here and it's almost similar. Okay. Let's say that I have my X axis, X1 and X2. The reason why I'm writing x1 and x2 because if I have multiple axes, like say if I have multiple dimension over here, I just have two dimension, right? Now in this particular two dimension, I can represent it by x and y. But if I have many dimensions, so I'm writing it as x1, x2, something like that, okay? Now in this particular case, let's say I can also give the equation of a straight line which looks something like this. So here I'm going to mention it as w1 x1 plus w2 x2 plus b is equal to 0. Now, this equation also matches this specific equation. Here you can see, instead of a, I'm writing w1. x, instead of x, I'm writing x1. Similarly, over here, instead of b, I'm writing w2. Instead of x2, uh, sorry, instead of y, I'm writing x2. Plus b is equal to 0. b basically becomes the intercept, okay? Now, in this particular case, you can see I have two important things. One is W1, W2. W1, W2 is basically my coefficients. So I can also give this representation as W transpose X plus B is equal to zero, right? So in the upcoming, any algorithms we will probably discuss, I will be using this particular equation regularly. Like W transpose X plus B is equal to zero. And this is nothing but this is a equation of a straight line. So equation of a straight line line super important and understand this representation this representation are almost one and the same now this is fine <clears throat> what happens if i have three dimensions or three axes so here let's say i have x1 
I have x2 and I have x3. Now in this particular case, we don't draw a straight line. Here, specifically we draw a 3D plane, okay? So let's say we are drawing a 3D plane and this plane will look something like this, okay? So this is how a plane will look like. The plane can be here, it can also be here, or it can also be here. Now in with respect to this, the equation will again change a little bit, okay? Now with respect to a 3D plane, this equation will become W1X1 plus W2X2 plus W3X3 plus B. B is basically my intercept is equal to zero, right? So here I have three axes, X1, X2, X3. And with respect to that, I have basically three uh, coefficients, W1, W2, W3. And again, as usual, I can also represent this as WX plus B is equal to zero, right? The same thing, right? <clears throat> here W will nothing be, it will be W1, W2, W3. And obviously you know that when we do matrix multiplication with W and X, one of the matrix we have to basically transpose it, okay? And similarly X will be nothing but X1, comma X2, comma X3. So when I probably, sorry, just a second, let me write this in another way, that it will look like X1 transpose, right? So this is my W and this is my X. So if I really want to do this a dot product over here, so here you'll be able to see that I have to do the transpose of one of the matrix. Similarly, now this is with respect to a 3D plane, right? And 3D plane, we basically create a 3D plane like this. What about an n-dimensional plane? n-dimensional plane. Now in this particular case, I can again give a better representation which looks like this. W1x1 plus W2x2 plus W3x3 like this up to wn xn is equal to zero so here you will be able to see again i can represent this as sorry i missed out b plus b is equal to zero plus b is equal to zero so this again becomes the same equation now let me do let me consider one 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 case okay one case over here let's say i just have two axes x1 and x2 and obviously in this case, I can represent my equation as W1X1 plus W2X2 plus B is equal to zero, right? The equation of a straight line. What if my equation passes through origin, okay? Now, when my equation passes through origin, over here you can see that, obviously we can find out coefficient, that is not a problem. But with respect to B, that is our intercept. B basically means, in this case, if my X1 and X2 are zero over here, let's say in this particular case, both are zero, right? Now in this case, what will happen, it, it is basically this line is passing through the origin. Now in short, B will also be equal to zero, right? So whenever there is a straight line that passes through origin, I can also represent this as W1X1 plus W2X2 is equal to zero, which is nothing but W transpose X is equal to zero. So equation of a straight line passing through the origin will have this particular equation. So equation of a straight line passing through an origin, passing through an origin is nothing but it is given by W transpose X is equal to zero. Okay. This is nothing but the equation of a straight line. So let's consider now the equation of a plane that we have basically got over here. Equation of a plane is usually given by a notation, which is pi. And this is not a 3.142, we are just saying it as pi in n dimension. And this is represented as W transpose X is nothing but it is equal to zero. Since we have considered that our intercept is basically, our line is passing through the origin. And in this particular case, obviously my W value, you know, it will be what W1, W2, W3 like this up to Wn. And my x value will similarly be x1, x2, x3 up to xn, right? And specifically when we do the dot operation, we are going to get this specific equation that is W transpose x is equal to 0. Now forget about the equation of a plane, guys. Now in this particular case, let's consider W multiplied by x. This W and x, let's consider that these are my two vectors. Let's say this is my W and x, okay? And uh, if this w and x are there and because over here obviously we have we have we have considered some values over here right here we are basically doing some uh, matrix multiplication by w transpose x is equal to zero but if i just talk in terms of linear algebra and if we try to see how this 
dot operation can be specified mathematically. Here I will specifically write W transpose X. It is nothing but magnitude, ma magnitude of W multiplied by magnitude of X multiplied by cos theta. And this cos theta will basically be giving my angle between them, right? W and X vectors. If I'm specifically talking about this as vectors, right? This in turn will be equal to zero. Okay, because my W transpose X is equal to zero. Initially, my W transpose X is equal to zero. Through linear algebra, we can definitely represent this equation as something like this, where we are considering magnitude of W multiplied by magnitude of X multiplied by cos theta. Now you need to understand when will cos theta be equal to zero. Obviously, when theta is equal to 90. Suppose if theta is equal to 90, then my cos theta will be equal to zero, right? So in this particular case, we can definitely make a conclusion and like like something like this like see let's see this conclusion okay so if suppose i have an hyperplane let's say this is my plane which is mentioned as pi then geometrically i can definitely mention w as that it will be a vector that will be parallel to this specific plane okay so this is basically my w right uh, this is my w and x coordinates that you can see over here it can be this point it can be that point it can be any points in this particular plane now this is with respect to a 2d line now similarly with respect to a 3d line how does a 3d line look like or how does a 3d plane look like so my let's say consider that this is my 3d plane okay let's consider that this is my 3d plane now in this particular point if i probably try to create a straight line this is basically my w and this will be always you know, uh, perpendicular to every points that I see probably over here in X1, X2, X3, X4, X5, whatever plane we are basically creating, this will always be perpendicular, right? So, mathematically, we can definitely mention uh, that W will always be perpendicular to my plane, right? And this is what is the equation that we basically use to represent this. Uh, and this basically shows that at every point of time, whenever we are considering W, it is going to be always perpendicular to plane. And this W can also be represented because see, understand in this equation, it also follows this, right? W transpose X plus B is equal to zero. At this point, at this point, this is basically part passing through origin zero comma zero. This point is again passing through zero comma zero. Now suppose if my coordinates or if my, if this line is not passing through zero comma zero, or if this plane is, basically why I'm using 0 comma 0 because my intercept is equal to 0 right so if I specifically say that if my intercept is not equal to 0 then it is not need to have that it needs to always pass through the origin right now this is with respect to a 2d line 2d plane right this this is with respect to a 2d line sorry not I'll not say 2d plane because I'll say plane with respect to a 3d right so here definitely origin it is passing let's say this is my 3d plane here the origin is 0 comma 0 then w is always going to be perpendicular to every points that we see with respect to x1 x2 x3 anything as such right so this is how we represent the equation of a line 3d plane and a hyperplane i hope you have understood this if you have not please do make sure that you revise and yes in the this topics will be super important when we are discussing about logistic uh, logistic regression we will be discussing about uh, uh, you know support vector machines and all so yes this was it thank you i'll see you all in the next video